So the first article I wanted to look at is entitled, Pastor, After God Overturns the Election Results, Atheists Will Finally Convert. This is on the Friendly Atheist website by Hemant Mehta. So let's give the article a read and see what it says. Pastor Todd Coconato is a Christian member of the MAGA cult who routinely interviews the kind of evangelicals who surround Donald Trump. In recent weeks, he's spoken with John MacArthur. That's another one I forgot to mention earlier in my list of pastors that are complete fucking nutcases. John MacArthur, Paula White, and Michelle Bachman. That's why it's worth listening to his recent delusion he offered while filming in his car, because a bunch of other Trump cultists take him seriously. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more with him and Meta. We have to talk about these people. We, we have no option. We have to talk about these nutcases. Even if they seem fringe, they're not. They are not fringe. These, this guy talks to congressmen. Seriously, we have to pay attention to these people. It's a problem. So let's listen to his video and see what he had to say. Just so back to the question, is Trump going to win? I think that as we pray, something happens. God responds. And when I ask the Lord, what should we do? Should we, should we stop praying? Should we accept our defeat and move on to the next thing? He says, absolutely not. Opposite. Pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. I find that fascinating because other people are getting the exact opposite message from God. God is telling other people, vote against Trump. He is evil. He's the Antichrist. Vote Biden in. Who's right? Who's right? And how do we tell? Notice the guy's wearing a Trump 2020 hat also. Let's keep listening. Pray without ceasing. Believe. Have faith. Trust. So that's what I'm getting from God. And so that gives me encouragement in my spirit because if the Lord is saying that, that means it's not done. You see, you understand me, saints? That means it's not done because if it were done, then I think God would be telling me, you know what, just move on or you know, move on to the next thing. You know, not only are we sitting here wondering why God is giving him this message and somebody else the exact opposite message, but I'm honestly starting to wonder how he knows the difference between God speaking to him and genuine mental illness, like genuine delusion. How do we tell the difference? Do you know the criteria required to diagnose somebody as schizophrenic? Some of the criteria include audible or visual hallucinations. I think more than three per month or something like that. How do we know this guy isn't just schizophrenic? Or more specifically, how does he know he's not schizophrenic? How do we make that determination? Now, I wouldn't give a shit if this was some nobody. He can work out his own mental health issues between himself and his therapist. But he interviews congressmen and massive megachurch pastors with tens of thousands of followers. This is a problem. What are we going to do about these people? Let's keep listening. Or, you know, move on to the next thing. You've entered into a new season and everybody needs to be prepared for the persecution. Now, does that mean there won't be tough times ahead? No. Does that mean there won't be persecution? No. These people bizarrely love to be persecuted. They have to be persecuted because the Bible says they will be. Even though th this guy specifically lives in a majority white country, majority Christian country, he has... He is the definition of privilege, Christian privilege, if no other. And he's talking about being persecuted. Are you fucking kidding me? This is a fucking joke. They have to imagine that they're persecuted because it fuels that enthusiasm. It burns that enthusiasm. That's what they need. They need the persecution complex. Let's keep listening. Does that mean there won't be persecution? No. But what it means is simply this. He has not told me to stop praying. Why would God tell you to stop praying? Has that ever happened? That's a little bit concerning to me. Um, is he, are you saying that he wants you to stop bothering him? That's kind of fun. Has that happened before? That's interesting to me. I believe that he's moving on our behalf in some way, shape, or form. And I believe that this is a war that we're going to have to pray this through 
pray this through until the very end here. But I do believe we're going to see God move on our behalf. And I think it's going to be such a miracle and sign and wonder. Now get this because this is important. Get this because this is important. I believe it's going to be such a miracle sign and wonder as this takes place that the people that even the godless, even the atheists are going to look and say, wow, look at the God that they serve. Look at the God that they serve. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I got to stop you there, buddy. This sounds like some shit right out of the Bible. Seriously, this sounds like a Bible verse. Like, uh, God performs some massive miracle, Old Testament God, and the non-believers saw this amazing miracle and, and said to themselves, I know I've been worshiping, I don't know, Ra or whatever other fucking bizarre God that they worshiped back then. But... My God couldn't do that. I mean, I can physically talk to my God, but their God could blah, blah, blah. That's what this sounds like. So I'm leaving my God and going over to your God because your God is more powerful than mine. That's what this sounds like, seriously. That's not the world we live in. I don't think this dude knows what an atheist is. We, we straight up don't fucking believe in your God. I haven't seen a lick of evidence that that any god exists any god let alone your one very specific god the moment i see evidence i'll believe it period the fact that god himself has not been able to provide evidence for me should be a sign why not why isn't he just sending a message to everybody in their heads just right now hey guys i'm god i'm real i, I exist Believe in me and worship me now. Why doesn't he do that? Why is he playing hide and fucking seek? There is a problem in this country that is going to have to be dealt with. These people are brainwashed to a degree I didn't know was possible. And we're going to have to figure out how to reverse that. Look at the God that they serve. Look at the God that they serve. Because... People are going to say it was impossible. They're going to say there was no way. There was, they're going to say, you know, absolutely not. It'll never happen. And then what God does when he moves, they're going to see and look and say, wow. And I believe it's going to bring people to salvation. And I believe it's going to bring people to salvation. If he came down from heaven right now and stood in front of me and said, hey, I'm God, and then performed a miracle to prove it, if he arranged the stars in the sky to say, I exist, or something like that, I would believe it instantly. I have never seen a lick of evidence that would ever imply that God is real. Not one bit. And honestly, with that being said, God knows who I am, right? He knows my psychology. He knows exactly what it would take to convince me that he's real, and he would be able to do it because he's all-knowing. So why doesn't he just fucking do it? Why all of this hide-and-seek shit? Seriously. Let's keep reading the article. This is Hemant Mehta speaking. If the election results are overturned, it won't be a sign from God. It'll be a sign of our broken democracy and Republican leaders' inability to put country ahead of their own party and ego. But so far... Even Republicans haven't been willing to overturn the results to prop up a sinking ship. That news hasn't reached members of the MAGA cult, though. These people are a lost cause. The more pressing question is how many of their followers will eventually accept that they're being played by these same religious leaders. Well said, Hemant Mehta. I completely agree with that. It's like, I think only 23 out of hundreds of Republican leaders in D.C., have acknowledged Biden's victory. I don't even know what to do with that information. It's so fucking disappointing to me. I mean, we've been watching for weeks people talk about overturning and destroying democracy. For weeks, we've been listening to pastors who previously were all about the Constitution, how much they love the Constitution, constitutional rights and this and that, and Second Amendment and the First Amendment and every other fucking amendment, unless it disagrees with them. Suddenly, they are anti-Constitution. They want to rip it up and install a fucking dictator. 
They suddenly don't like democracy anymore when they think that the dictator that may rise to power will be on their side. This is stranger than the alternate reality that I could have imagined.